Welcome to today's show. For all of you watching on YouTube, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button and click that bell for notifications. Today on Mr. Nashville Talks, someone you know and love from the hit television series Dallas and probably every television series in the 80s and the 90s, Miss Audrey Landers. Well, today I am very excited because we have an incredible guest. Um, gosh, I mean, there's no way I could have watched her all my life because shes I think she's younger than I am. Um, she definitely looks younger than I am, but we, we fell in love with her on the, on the chorus line in Dallas as Afton on Dallas, but on, she was on every major hit television show, especially in the eighties. And if you were on a hit show in the eighties, then you, your rerun gold, because almost every, everything she was on just is still rerunning and rerunning and rerunning. And she still continues to work and makes music and everything else. And we're going to talk a lot about all of that. So I am so excited to have Audrey Landers with us. Hi. How are you? I'm good. It's great to be here. Well, I uh, we saw your mother just a little while ago. <laughs> I know. And, and I, one of the things that I love about uh, your career is is how close your family has always kind of been, even when you you know you had separate careers, but yeah, you, you've you've really managed to pull that all off. But you know, working together and separate and never seemed to really have a, a, a problem with that, have you? No, we've always enjoyed working together. And I think um, a lot of that has to be credited to my mom, the way uh, she raised us when we were younger. Um, we always felt like we were one team um, during the show biz years, you know? And um, we, of course, as all families do, we have our disagreements and our all out <laughs> <laughs> arguments but um we always make up <laughs> yeah. and um yeah so during our career especially with my mom at the helm of it um you know we really did love working together and then as we grew up and had families and our careers took different directions I don't think my sister is um, that interested in showbiz anymore <laughs> she very happy and gorgeous and doing what she loves on the family side of things. Um, and uh, I am as well, but I'm still active in the business. Yes, definitely. And you were really, you were like a child prodigy, weren't you? I mean, you, you started early. I did. I did. I'm kind of an antique now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I started as a child. Um, I began acting, I mean, really acting, at, you know, the school plays and local theater and uh, my first professional break came when I uh, was cast as a very young teen in the soap opera The Secret Storm and then moved on um, after a year or so, or so on that to Somerset, uh, which I uh, was in during the years that I was going to college. So it was kind of a huge balancing act. Um, being a regular on a soap opera for the years that I was in college. And so um, I kind of was torn in all directions and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone else, but I really am glad that I did it while well, I, mean, I did it. And when you say college, I mean, you studied at Juilliard, you went, you uh, psychology. And Harvard and Columbia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Harvard slash Columbia. <laughs> I mean, you go, when you go for it, you go for the best, don't you? I mean, it's like, you know, the best, you go for the best acting roles, but you did it even in your academia as well. Yeah, I always, um, you know, I strive to do the best I can. And uh, I think most people do, you know, yeah. I, that's a, a, I think that's, a, it's been a driving force for me, certainly. And um it definitely has its pitfalls because when you reach so, so high, you know, you're always uh, more susceptible to failure and yeah. rejection. And look, we've all faced that in every aspect of our lives, I'm sure. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think it's how you deal with it that matters. Well, and, and I mean, you're this really strong, smart uh, person. And a lot of the roles that, because you are a very beautiful person as well, they want to play you as this, you know, naive Marilyn 
Well, you know, I, I enjoy um, playing all different roles. Yeah. And, I, and I was very fortunate that I don't really think I got typecast, despite right. the fact that I was on Dallas for so many years. I mean, I was on for eight seasons. And um, the character evolved and grew as I grew. And so even Afton wasn't typecast as right. Afton, you know? Um, so it was a wonderful character arc through those years and she matured and I think reached a lot of um, viewers and touched them in very different ways. Yes, definitely. And then you get to work with uh, Larry Hagman. Dallas was a global, gosh, it was everywhere, wasn't it? It was, and during the years that I was on, and it was the number one show in like a hundred and some countries, yeah. and and I was very fortunate that I'm also a musician, singer, songwriter, um, and um, my career really took off in Europe during those years, and um, I established myself as and as they call it, an evergreen artist. <laughs> and so a lot of my hits throughout the 80s and 90s are still being played and are popular. And I have just wonderful fans. Yes, because I mean, uh, you were a platinum selling artist over there. I mean, you, you were, um, I mean, still are, because that's one thing I love about Europe. Like you said, uh, they love their, their, they don't let them go. If, if they love you, they love you for forever. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, there, there's a lot of similarity between my European fans and like country music fans. Yes, I was actually I, thinking that. Yeah. yeah. And you, you have some ties to Nashville as well, I right? Do. That's where your first, <laughs> yeah. that was before, right? Yeah, it was before my European yeah. career and before my acting career really took off. Um, and I think that I, I do believe that my music would have probably done uh, much better in the U.S. if I had not followed my path to um, pursue my acting career, which I was so fortunate to have had those, you know, two paths. And now in this era, those paths are one and they really feed off each other. But back in the, you know, late seventies and early eighties, especially, um, there was kind of a huge separation. If you were an actor, yeah. oh my goodness, you couldn't possibly be a singer. And yet my roots were in music and writing. And, um, and so I was really, really fortunate that um, a European producer uh, saw Dallas, saw that I was singing on Dallas, which right. also was a, quite a wonderful phenomenon that I got that Audrey wrote all the songs that Afton sang on the series. As I, I had done in my career. Pardon me? I didn't know that part that you had wrote. Oh, yeah. The song and honestly, and all my soap operas as a teen, I did the same thing. I played a young aspiring songwriter. And so I, you know, I was the little hippie-ish kid with the guitar and all of those. And I also wrote my songs for those uh, shows as well. But, you know, um, so a European producer uh, named Jack White saw Dallas and approached my mom who was managing me and said, does she really sing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you never know. Yeah. And of course I did. And so um, we uh, collaborated and uh, overseas, <laughs> which was also very interesting. Um, but we recorded um, most, most of my hits were recorded in the U.S. And um, we, um, my first hit in, hmm. 1983 or so called Manuel Goodbye, which I co-wrote um, and sold like close to 10 million copies worldwide. So it was a really huge splash. And I'm sure that a lot of the success had to do with Dallas because people were fans of Dallas. And so they were open to seeing what I had to offer. And I had a great label and great promotion team and, you know, it all converged onto one wonderful career that has lasted a few decades. Yeah. And then you, you like you were doing that and all those concerts overseas and promotion overseas yeah. while you were filming Dallas. It was insane. How did you do that? I mean, because I know how filming is, 
you know, is sometimes 15 hours or more, or, you know, or at least yeah. 12, you know? Yeah. Well, I, it definitely was, um, it was challenging. Um, I was, we were filming most of the time or much of the time, at least most of the time in LA, only three months a year, we would be in Dallas, but much of the year we were in LA filming and my, every couple weekends as my songs were released and I needed to promote them and do concerts and television shows and so forth. Um, I would leave if I were able to, you know, on a Thursday night, arrive in Frankfurt or Paris or wherever. My mom and I would fly the 11 hours of, and, you know, that was our time to sleep, eat, do our, you know, yeah. facial routine on the plane, get off looking perfect um, and be met with video and press and so forth and immediately go to do the afternoon shows, um, Top of the Pops and all those things, um, press and then a concert at night. And I would do that, um, you know, for three, four days in a row and then fly back to Dallas to film. Um, and then there were those uh, times when I could take two weeks off and do a, a more extensive, you know, city by city tour. But most of the time, um, it was every couple of weeks doing that crazy weekend junket. Yeah. And, and it was fun. It was exhausting. <laughs> um, and, you know, it established me as a recording artist. Yes, definitely. And because um, I've seen, you know, other pieces on you. And I mean, you have so many gold records and so many, you know, and platinum and, and people don't realize, you know, in today's way of thinking, I mean, you had to work for those numbers. I mean, you know, now it's just, you know, YouTube or, or whatever, and they, you know, stream everything and they don't have to put in the same hard physical work that, that yeah yeah and you were lucky to have your mom to to be there to uh, kind of help yes I really was because it's really important to have somebody that's got your back a hundred percent you were on Dallas of course uh when Donna Reed even came on the show and that whole thing with that how, I mean did you get to work with Donna I can't you remember know, those scenes you know I wasn't on the show during those that oh. season. That was not one of the seasons I was on because I had taken a break to do the movie A Chorus Line. Yeah, and okay. so I left the show for a couple of years and I was just very fortunate that they invited me back for the last few seasons. So we really have had, you know, it, it's it's been great that we've had the diversity to yes. produce. I've been able to write, produce, um, and act in a variety of roles and and still continue with my music. Yes, I wanted to ask you about the, you're working with your son. You've been working with him Did on a lot of projects since he was little, you know. I have. In fact, I was going to post something for, you know, one of the flashback Fridays because a fan sent me a, a YouTube video of a, of a performance that he and I did when he was like nine in Europe, one of the first concerts he joined me on. Um, and uh, so I will, I'll, I'll send it to you anyway, because it's kind of cute. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it, I would love that. We could, we could post it on, and show it in the show. Um, did, I know that I saw some clips where he's speaking uh, German, I think, or in the song anyway, did he learn the language? He did. I, and, uh, you know, you know more... I, he also speaks Spanish. He's just a really, uh, he's multilingual. Wow, mm -hmm. that's great. Well, are, are you... Um, are you are you multilingual as well? Yes, and oh. I'm not as good as I have been at other points in my life, but yeah, I, I am, and um, I speak German. I speak a little French, not enough Spanish, but uh, yeah. Well, that's 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 incredible. I I mean, especially since you had a, a lot of success there. I mean, you know that you can do some communication with the fans and the in the public, I guess with the public, you would have to uh, for the promotional uh, side of it as well. Did you do a lot of uh, press in, in Britain and do a lot of work in Britain as well? Not as much. No, not really. Um, my songs were, um, I think that they really leaned towards Germany, Austria, Switzerland, the Netherlands, 
um, Scandinavia and Spain and Portugal. I did lots of promotion in all of those areas, but very little in England, which I regret because I was singing in English. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to. Well, but, <laughs> they'd love to have you, I'm sure, even now because, you know, they were huge Dallas fans as well, you know. Yeah. So between that and the music, that would be a great uh, combination for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, we started talking about your son, and I'd, I'd like to go back with to yes. that. You all are working on a new project together, aren't you? We are. We um, are so fortunate that we love working together, and he is so talented. Um, and I'm not saying it as a mother, because honestly, it's a it's a career choice. And uh, to work with, you know, I want to surround myself with the most talented people I can. And I just, uh, he happens to be the one. When I look at his writing, his music writing skills, um, you know, I was okay. He is phenomenal. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and so we have collaborated on several projects. One, which is really special. Uh, they're all special, but this one is like, uh, at the front of our list at the moment. It's a dark pop musical film, which now we have interest also from Broadway producers to adapt to the stage. So it's been a very um, exciting, long journey. And um, I hope <laughs> that we are, uh, we're close to getting the film made now. And, and what uh, is it? It's rock music? It's 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 very um, haunting, I would say, on the pop side, but very a little more dark. Yeah, and that that's really in too. So I think that would do really well, especially like you would draw a lot of younger people, you know, yes. and that that yes. which is great for Broadway, you know, and for for, the, for music streaming for concerts yeah. for everything. It's yeah. it's definitely not your Disney musical. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, and we wrote the screenplay, the music, he produced the music. Um, it's really special and uh, timely um, and cutting edge. Yeah, I think that would be, I think it would be incredible. And then uh, you two would star in the in it. I, I assume you'd like to do that, of course. Well, uh, yeah, we did write yeah. a role for each of us, but That's we're right. not the number one stars in it. No, we, uh, we're reaching out to some really incredible um, actors and um, music people and um, yeah we're really we're putting together our team now we're reaching out to a super choreographer and um, it's a lot to put together but we're really close, <laughs> we're really well, close. Uh, another interesting fact that I'm sure you're asked about a lot is um, the playboy cover that you and your sister did and you're one of the very few people that uh got to be on the cover that didn't you know take yeah, it off no That's right. <laughs> there was no nudity on the cover or on the 10 page pictorial inside so it was um groundbreaking and i'm sure a lot of people liked it and i'm sure a lot of people didn't it was a little controversial um in that we kept our clothes on yeah but it was our choice um and we had we were given the the choice either get paid an enormous sum of money and take it all off mm -hmm. and we said we'll forego the money if we have photo approval and no nudity and yeah. so we did and that was smart i mean because uh, you got all that exposure and then all that talk to i guess the one thing that confuses yeah. a, a lot of people is that they don't realize that that uh, some of, you know, there's a handful that didn't pose nude, but that were on the cover. It's not very many. And they just assume that everyone, you know, did. I know like people the same way with Dolly Parton, they think she's nude inside and she's not. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. So I think we're in really good company. <laughs> yeah, well, definitely. Definitely. We love her here. Too. My name and Dolly Parton's in the same sentence. We're in good company. <laughs> you, you two would, I think, work well together because she's really... Uh, up and, and friendly and you know positive like like I've always fought when as I followed you you always seem to be that way I don't remember ever seeing anything negative maybe in some of the you know the characters you you might play might have right. a little bit <laughs> that's the fun part exactly. um 
how was it to go back and revisit Dallas all those years later? You know, it was really wonderful stepping back into the set and uh, seeing some of the cast again. I felt like it hadn't stopped. It was yeah. really wonderful. Um, I'm sad that it didn't continue. Um, and I, I really thought that the character, like uh, the storyline between me and Sue Ellen and having my daughter marrying her son could have been something really, really spectacular. Um, so I kind of felt, oh, they could have done so much more with that. But the show was beautifully shot and the actors were beautiful, wonderful. And, uh, you know, I think that it was, it was a really cool um, reboot. Yeah. It really was. Yeah, because they, they really stayed true to the, to the show, I think, where a lot of like the Dynasty reboot, they just took and wiped everybody clean and hired all new people. It was like a totally just the they took the idea and made yeah. a new show. And I, I think people get too invested in the characters for that. And um, yeah, I think especially if you want to draw on the big fan base, you want to yeah. keep some of that integrity, yeah. you know. I agree. And, um, well, you know, Charlene lives in Nashville now. So, you know, maybe we, we can get you back recording here. Do you have a special Nashville memory from when you were here recording? Well, you know, my, my, <laughs> my Nashville story is really special to me because as a young teen, I was writing songs um, just for myself, pretty much. And uh, my mom was a very hardworking, basically single mom. And um, one day she came home from work and she said to me, you know, we're going to Nashville tomorrow. You're skipping school. And I went, what? <laughs> she said, yeah. And uh, I was, we were living in, uh, up in upstate New York. Mm -hmm. And she said, we are going to, you, you know, get your little uh, cassettes together and put your notebook together and we're going to go to Nashville. And I said, okay. <laughs> so we get on, there's like a shuttle, a small, you know, we, we fly from New York. We land at like 930 in the morning. My mother tells the taxi driver, you know, I've heard of a place called uh, Music Row and can you take us there? We go there and we literally went door to door knocking on every little publisher, um, record company, whatever, and seeing if they would listen to my music. And it's starting to rain and we're looking a little bedraggled and we finally get to uh, Tree Publishing, okay? This was years ago, obviously. <laughs> and I walk in and we're a little, uh, little rained on, but we go to the receptionist and I give her my tape and, you know, ask if somebody would listen. And she says, just wait a minute. And she takes it to the back and she comes out and she says, yes, Mr. Killen will see you after lunch. Buddy Killen. Yeah. And um, so, you know, we were elated and we yeah. had a quick lunch and got it together. And I came back and we sat down with Buddy in his office. He said, yeah, I really like these songs. And, and literally it was a cassette yeah. with me singing and playing the guitar. And he said, yeah, really like the songs, but who's the singer? And I said, well, I'm the singer. <laughs> I'm 14, I'm the singer. And, um, and he went, wow, that's, you know, I really love your voice. I love your songs. And literally he signed me. That's great. Oh, like this. And um, shortly thereafter, um, we wrote, we, he decided he want, I had written some more stuff and he wanted to record in Muscle Shoals, Alabama at Rick Hall studio. Yeah. And so my mom and buddy and I drove <laughs> from Nashville to Muscle Shoals and my mom was driving and buddy and I were in the back seat writing the flip side to the single. And um, we got there and it was just the most surreal experience, you know, we had dinner at their home and it was like, uh, it was amazing. And um, so that was my 
super duper introduction to Nashville. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you get one of the top execs, you go, you get to be in Nashville, and then you also get to go to Muscle Shows. I mean, that covers a lot of territory. <laughs> it's like, a lot of people just want to do one of those things. And you get to do all three that quick. No. It was unbelievable. And um, we were, uh, the song did okay. Um, and then Buddy said, you know, let, you know, you're, you have a lot of different elements to your voice. Let's try to um, get uh, Epic Records from New York to release you. And so we released kind of a country rock cover and they went, nah, you're from Nashville. I went, no, I'm not from Nashville. <laughs> I, this is like so confusing. I'm, yeah. I've got both worlds in me. I write country music. I'm, si I'm you know, I'm singing. Um, I, I just always was a country music fan. I mean, I just loved country. That's what I was writing it as a teen. Um, and so it kind of got my music career in the U.S. got a little thwarted there. And then I got the opportunity to get a soap opera and start acting. And I jumped on that opportunity and wrote songs for my characters in the soaps, as I had mentioned earlier. So. Yeah, I think that's incredible that they let you use your own songs. Yeah. I think that, I mean, that, of course, songwriters, and I've worked with a lot of songwriters, and um, that uh, most songwriters, deep down, if they had to pick one of their talents, you know, they can only have one. They usually pick the songwriting because it's it's therapeutic for them and it's a vehicle for so many things. And back then, that was the uh, the money, you know, was in the songwriting and, and everything as well. If you um, yeah, for sure. Well, my son, getting back to him and his songwriting, it's just like as you said, it's cathartic in many ways. And I started writing when I was about eleven years old. And um, it was about that time, you know, he had done all the European stuff with me as a little kid. And uh, because he just, you know, what happened was my European label came back to me. I took a break, had my kids and they said, well, will you record again? And I said, well, you know, I'm at a different stage of my life. Um, and I just don't think I can pick up as that teeny bopper type pop image I had it wasn't teeny bopper but it was definitely a young pop I said how about we do some mother-son duets because my audience had grown with me okay yeah. so they had had their kids and right. they were you know so Daniel came along with me because he wanted to so badly um and uh, we recorded some albums in many languages in of mother-son duets and he became like the darling of all the grandmas <laughs> in Europe. And then he started in the States, he, he formed his own band and he started writing his own stuff. And I said, wait a minute, you are way too good to be doing this you know, stuff with your mom. You've got to branch out on your own. So they, he did one single in Europe as like a little um, spunky rock kid. And he wrote, co-wrote this song. Um, about he doesn't want to go to school. He's not going to, he's skipping school on Monday because he just wants to play his music and practice with his band. And it was just this 11 year old spunky cute kid writing this. And they went, oh no, that's not his image. I said, you're out of there, Daniel. <laughs> You've got to pursue, we're, we're going to help you pursue. And he formed his own band and he did all the county fairs and, um, with his own style and his own music. And he began, as I said, writing when he was 11. And it would be, it, it was kind of funny because like, if we would have a disagreement and he would be, you know, stubborn about something and we'd have an argument, I said, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to, you go up to your room and you write a song about it. I do not want to hear how upset this makes you. You put that down in music. And that's, it's really how he started um, writing, you know, more meaty and, and uh, songs with a lot of substance. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, he looks like a star. I mean, he <laughs> looks like he, he's, he's got everything going for him with the, with the talent, the look, especially, you know, in the States, that's very, you know, 
you have to have kind of a combination of all of that. Yeah. And, and, and I think he's got it. He definitely, from what I've seen, you know, in, in, on the internet and everything, um, I think, I think he's going to do really well. And with a mom like you guiding him, I think he'll, he'll do even better because you've been there and you know what to expect. And I do, but it's a very different world now. Yeah, you know, it really it, is. It really is different. And I think he has a better uh, fix on the pulse of today than I do as far as what, uh, you know, social media and all that. I mean, I'm somewhat active on social media, but I mean, he really understands it better and he's got a great fan base. And, you know, I think he, uh, He's just so multi-talented um, as, you know, the film and show is one thing. He's also written two full seasons of a really um, naughty comedy, <laughs> an irreverent comedy, as they say. Yes. And, uh, so, uh, you know, he's just really got a lot of stuff that he's, um, he's a real go-getter. <laughs> well, um I know we've got to uh, kind of wrap up because you have meetings and things to go to today. And um, but I wanted to ask you before we go, um, what what are some of the things you're watching on television today or and music you're listening to today? Okay, well, television wise, I have a variety of things. I am watching The Handmaid's Tale. Have you seen it? I seen yeah, I just started, so I, I don't know enough, but I, I just saw like two episodes so far. So I kind of did a crash course of the first three seasons so that my sons and I could continue with season four, which we're at right now. I think it's mind blowing. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so I love that. I also, <laughs> on the total other end of the spectrum, I like Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist because it incorporates music and fun. And so I do love that as well. Um, and I'm kind of a, I like sci-fi. I, I know this sounds like I'm all over the place. Um, no, yeah. We are also um, writing, Daniel and I are writing um, a mid-apocalyptic high concept drama. And so that is kind of in, you know, the kind of uh, stuff I love to watch as well. Well, so. that's great. And, and what music do you, are you listening to today? Doesn't even have to be new music. It can be- No, no I listen to everything. Yeah. I, I love um, a lot. I do love Sia. Yeah. Um, uh, and, um, oh gosh, I just, you know, I just listen to so much stuff trying to think where I would, when I work out, you know, I'm listening to Lady Gaga when I'm, <laughs> when I'm uh, um, just hanging around the house, whatever great country music comes on as we are all doing the dishes as a family, that's what we listen to. Uh, so my sons kind of um, are guiding the playlist, so to speak, when we're doing stuff together as a family, because during this whole pandemic, both of my sons came back home and were able to work from home here in Florida. So uh, it's been a challenging year and yet um, there, there were sides that were definitely a blessing. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you so much for doing this. I mean, you know, as, as growing up in the eighties, you were on every show. So I, I just, it's, or it seemed that way anyway. And <laughs> And, it, and if you weren't, your sister was on them. So for yeah. a long time, I thought you all were twins. Of course. I, or one I, person. Yes. One person. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. A fan would come up and say, wow, I love you. Are you, you or your sister? And I would go, hmm, I'm my sister. And they'd go, oh, I knew it. And I'd go, okay, <laughs> whatever. Well, thank you so much for, for giving me the time today to do this. And um you know, I can't wait to see the musical because I'm, I'm going to believe that it gets on Broadway and uh, I'm going to be looking for all kinds of new projects with you and, uh, and your son. And, um, and let's give what his what's his name again so that we okay. get the right name. It's Daniel Landers. Okay. He's Daniel Landers. And uh, he's all over the place. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and I thank you for this interview. You really asked some fun questions and uh, I enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Subscribe to our mailing list and you could win a CD or DVD project by today's featured artist. 
To enter, please go to www.mrnashvilletalks.com and enter your email address. While there, take a look around, browse through our music store. Our show is totally funded by viewer support. Every t-shirt or music purchase from our store helps bring us new shows for you. Thank you.